Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out Lua Game Engines. Now this has kind of turned into a bit of a series this week. We already did one on C++ 3D Game Engines on C Sharp. 3D game engines, and today we're going to be looking at Lua game engines. Now, for the Lua chapter, I'm going to cheat a bit. Uh, we're actually going to have 2D and 3D game engines in here, and I'm going to let a little bit of binding stuff in as well. But still, all the same, hopefully you will find this interesting. So basically what we are doing is we are looking at uh, game engines out there where you can use Lua for scripting your game logic. doesn't mean that the game engine itself is written in Lua or that the only option is Lua. This just means that Lua is one of the options for programming game logic. The requirements here are uh, 2D, 3D game engine under active development. Uh, and really, that's about it. And I got a feeling with this one, I may have missed more because Lua bindings are just so popular. But uh, these are the ones I could find or recall off the top of my head. If it is defunct or no longer in development, I do not mention it here. Although I do have a bit of a rundown on uh, defunct Lua ones that we're going to cover at the very end. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, as mentioned earlier, this is an ongoing series. We've already done one on C++ game engine. So if you're interested in getting a 3D C++ game engine that's under development. Uh, check that one out. We've also got a 2D, uh, uh, sorry, a C Sharp version. And today we are looking at Lua. I'm not going to spoil it, so we'll come back to that one in a second. And let's jump in with our first game engine. We're going to do 2D first and then 3D. And the first one is the default game engine. I love the default game engine. I've done a full tutorial series on the default game engine. It uses a messaging system. It's going to take a little bit of time to get to know and to get to understand. But what's awesome with the default is it includes a level editor, a code editor, a complete integrated environment, and a full framework for creating 2D games with some minor 3D support. It's awesome. Check it out if you haven't already. And once again, I mentioned I've done a full tutorial series on getting started with default. So I've linked that also um, in the list. You'll see learn more clicks. Uh, if there's a link there that says learn more, it means I've either done a tutorial or a video about that topic already. All right. Next one is Corona. Corona SDK has had a, they've been around forever, been used to make some pretty famous games of which I can't recall any right now, but very strongly used in the mobile space. Games you have definitely heard of were created using Corona. Uh, it was commercial, then it became free, then it became ad supported, and, and then it became, I don't know, I think it's free again now, completely free. Um, but the business model behind it keeps changing up a bit, but definitely this one has been around a very, very long time um, and is quite popular. Uh, it does not include an editor, by the way, nor does this one, Love2D. Now, Love2D is more of a framework than an engine, if I'm honest, uh, but I also love Love2D, a pun not intended. I've done a full tutorial series. I did a series on basically getting started with programming. So if you are starting game development and you have zero experience whatsoever, I teach you the basics of the Lua programming language and then show you how to make basic games using Love2D. Uh, excellent, excellent framework. Um, yeah, it's a great place for beginners to start for sure. And some people are using it to make uh, indie style games. I think there's some love games on Steam. Uh, definitely 2D oriented, by the way. Uh, but you need to provide your own code editor. There is no level tools or anything like that. So you got to bring those in yourself. Next up, we have Gitteros. Now, Gitteros used to be it used to be basically Corona Gitteros and another product called Moy, which unfortunately is now defunct, which is a shame because I've actually done a tutorial series on it as well. Uh, but Gitteros is another one that's been around for quite a while. The cool thing with Gitteros is it's free, open source, and includes a full editing environment. So you've got your own code editor, and I think level editor, but I might be lying about that last part. Uh, but if you are looking for 2D games in Lua that especially cross-platform and mobile, uh, Gitteros may definitely be one worth checking out, especially now that it is all open source and free. It used to be a commercial project. Uh, and then this one's kind of stretching the, the, the rules here a bit because you're technically, these are bindings. So bindings to Lua via Raylib-Lua for the Raylib library. I love Raylib. Raylib is kind of the best way of making C or C++ accessible to beginners. And it's just a straightforward, simple, game framework for creating 2D games, and now 3D actually, uh, but they have full Lua bindings and they are properly supported from the developer themselves. So I included it here. It's primarily a C-oriented framework, but Lua is supported, so it's on this list. Plus I love Raylib, so shout out to Raylib. Next up, we have the Spring Engine. We're jumping into 3D now, by the way. Spring is an open source project. You script using Lua. It is entirely all about creating real-time strategy games. Um, I actually don't have a whole lot of experience with it, but I do know the game logic is done using Lua. Um, it's almost like 
you kind of got a framework to work from, um, and then you script your game's complete logic using uh, the Lua programming language. So if you're looking for an easy to get started with real-time strategy game focused 3D game engine, uh, Spring Engine may be perfect for you. Uh, next up, we have Game Guru. Game Guru is one of those, you know, 3D made easy kind of environments. And if you want to extend the logic of it, you extend the logic using the Lua programming language. It's designed so you don't have to do any programming, but if you want to extend it, you can do so using Lua. Did a video on this one recently, so if you're interested in learning more, predictably enough, click learn more. All right. Next up, we have Shiva. Shiva made it into the C++ list. They have even in the C Sharp list. Shiva's got a lot of bindings. But the primary way of programming in Shiva is using Lua. Now, with the C++ list, that was for extending Shiva and creating modules. The primary way you're supposed to program using the Shiva 3D game engine is using the Lua programming language. This guy's been in a weird beta situation forever. Uh, curious to see where it, it turns up or what becomes of this engine. Uh, and it's commercial and you pay for it, but it's in beta, it's not available. It's a very strange setup, but if you're interested in learning more, definitely check out Shiva. Uh, next up, we have Leadworks. Leadworks is, did I do a video on Leadworks? Yes, I did. I think I did. Uh, but anyways, you can develop in C++, but the primary programming interface, again, is Lua. Um, if you, Especially if you don't have the professional edition, you have to use uh, Lua. So that is the programming interface in this. It is, uh, uh, I don't know, a beginner-focused 3D game engine. Uh, pretty much everything you need. There is the full engine. There's an editing environment. Uh, yeah. So uh, this one's on Steam all the time. There's a new version coming out soon. Uh, and when that happens, you see the old version being sold incredibly cheap. I think I've seen this much as 90% off. So uh, if you're willing to spend a few bucks, you can pick it up on Steam, generally in sale form for, like I said, under 10 bucks. Next up, we have Amazon Lumberyard. Now, this one is kind of a twofer. Uh, CryEngine, which is what Amazon Lumberyard is spun off from, the original CryEngine 3.x version that ultimately became Lumberyard used Lua as the game logic scripting language. You can also, of course, create your game code using C++. So Lumberyard continued to use Lua as their scripting language while CryEngine uh, in 5.x version has deprecated it. So if you are interested in using Lua in a big time game engine, uh, do definitely consider checking out Lumberyard. Now next up, uh, we have Roblox Studio. Now this one is a bit of a strange entry because it's a platform uh, where you can kind of create your own games and make money selling them within their platform. I don't actually know a whole lot about Roblox other than the fact that it's scripted using Lua and uh, people make a lot of money on this thing apparently. Um, again, I've not used much of it. It kind of really reminds me of Second Life. Um, same basic premise, but if you're interested in creating 3D games online, uh, Roblox you know, it has full integrated world building tools and the logic is done using the Lua programming language. Bit of an iffy one to put on this list, but I know if I didn't put it on, someone would have mentioned it. Urho 3D is also on this list and was also on the C++ list and via Urho Sharp Bindings was also on the C Sharp list. So Urho is really well represented in various different programming languages. Uh, there are fully supported Lua bindings, but do be aware you do need to turn them on in your code. Stingray. Now this one is deprecated, kinda. I loved the Stingray engine. It's a shame they got rid of it. It was a uh, uh, data focused, lightweight C game engine where you did your scripting in Lua, created by uh, Fat Shark, was originally called BitSquid, was used to make Magicka 2 and uh, Warhammer Vermintide 1 and 2. So it's a very battle tested engine that Autodesk bought and then eventually killed off. So why is it on this list? Well, they kind of killed it off. Uh, you can still access Stingray functionality via 3D Studios Max interactive. So if you're using, if you have 3D Studios Max interactive, which is included in 2018 point everything, I think, uh, Stingray engine is basically built into it now. It's, the problem is it's not really a game engine anymore. It is more orientated towards um, arch visualization type things. But you could theoretically still make games with it. Uh, I, you might still be able to get your hands on Stingray it's not for purchase, but you can continue to use your license. And again, it's, it's still sad that this guy died because Stingray had a lot of potential and Autodesk just kind of blew it up. 
And we are done. Now, a few things to mention, and I covered a couple of these already. Uh, we do have some deprecated or defunct. As I mentioned, Crying Engine no longer supports Lua or will no longer support Lua. Uh, Cocos 2D, the cross-platform um, 2D framework, well, it actually still supports Lua. Cocos 2D X has Lua built into the C++ code base, but there is absolutely zero documentation on how to use it. And it doesn't really seem to be a first-class citizen language anymore. So. Um, that's an option, but not really. Then there's a 3D programming language open source called Polycode that looked so awesome and seems to kind of be dead now. Uh, and then finally, Marmalade. Marmalade is another one. Um, mobile focus used to be commercial game engine, was used to make several games, to be honest. EA was a big Marmalade user for, in the mobile space. Uh, unfortunately, earlier this year, um, Marmalade kind of got killed. And also there is Quick Time, uh, QT Quick. Uh, it, which is from a QT as in troll tech used to be called. They, they make a cross-platform 2D toolkit for C++. They make a multimedia cross-platform product called QT Quick, uh, which is Lua powered. And I'm sure there are a dozen more that I'm forgetting at this point in time because Lua is just kind of one of those languages. I think I got the big ones, uh, but if I did miss any, uh, please do let me know in comments down below or on the comments on Game From Scratch, of course, which I will link with all of these articles on it. And uh, yeah, that are those are 2D and 3D game engines powered by the Lua framework. Now there's kind of coming to the end of this series. There's not much I could do. If I did Java, we'd basically talk about JMonkey Engine, um, Joggle, uh, LibGDX. Yeah, we'd probably be done at that point. Uh, JavaScript may happen. Uh, hard to say. Can I, when you get into the... Yeah, I might still do JavaScript. JavaScript might be the only language I have left to do. And I might also do one of these on 2D frameworks in general. Now, I kind of uh, screwed over C++ and C Sharp in the, you know... Um, the chance of being brief in these the kind of lists or to at least keep them topical in that I didn't cover 2D and 3D uh, game engines for um, that were created in C++ or C Sharp. Things like uh, uh, default, uh, not default, um, uh, brain uh, duality, for example. A lot of people said, why didn't you cover this? And then there's a lot of frameworks I didn't really touch on, things like XNA. Uh, I could kind of build those together into uh, another video, but I kind of hit the main ones I've got based off of programming language. Now, if there is a programming language out there you can think of that actually has enough languages or enough game engines or frameworks to actually make a list, uh, let me know. The only one I can really think of remaining is probably JavaScript. And if you're interested in seeing a list of JavaScript engines, please do let me know that as well in the comments down below. So hopefully the series has been at least slightly informative. Hopefully you've learned at least one or two new engines for your language of choice, or you know have a better appreciation of what uh, particular languages are supported where. Um, and yeah, if you have any suggestions, do let me know. I'll also probably throw all these together into a playlist so that if you discover one and you want to find the others, they'll all be together as a playlist. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.